In this video, I'm going to be showing you OpenUI, which is a really impressive open source project that allows you to essentially have something analogous to the VO product that the team over at Vercel put out. If I just demonstrate VO for a moment here, and I say a landing page for a SaaS company. And essentially what it's doing is we're asking for the LLM to respond back with HTML elements that give us Tailwind classes. As you can see here, we have these nice different options here, and you're able to take this. You can look at the code. It gives you a couple different options. So say if you want to grab the uh, JSX and the styles, you can see it all here. And then the other nice thing with this is there is also the option where you can just add it to a project by running this npx command. This is definitely more of a full featured version of what I'm about to show you, but nevertheless, this is incredibly impressive. First, I want to shout out the creator of the project, which is Chris Van Pelt. I encourage you to go over to the GitHub repository and star the repo. And the nice thing with this project is there is also a demo where you can just go ahead and interact with this. In this video, I'm not going to be showing you how to set it up locally, but it is incredibly straightforward. So you git clone the repository, you go within the directory, you install the packages that you need, you add in an OpenAI key, and then you go ahead and you run it, and you'll be able to have this all locally on your machine. To get started, or to at least try this out, you can go ahead and just check out the demo here. So I'm gonna be showing you a little bit what this does and what you can do with it. Off the bat, we have history on the left-hand side here. If you wanna look at a couple different examples, here we just have a simple newsletter signup form, as well as a contact form. Now, the nice thing with this, so let's just pick one of these examples. If I go ahead and select an element and change something about it, what this allows you to do is to select those DOM elements. Here you can click the button, you can click the input here. And if you say, I want the placeholder text to read hello. What's happening here is it's going to re-render this essentially in an iframe. And what it allows you to do is instead of having to write out all this HTML, which can often take a little bit of time, especially as you're adding in those Tailwind classes, you can just do this with natural language. All right, so I just want to demonstrate a couple different features here, which make this really neat and interesting to try out. It gives you the ability where you can put in the screenshot of a UI, and then we can just go ahead and submit that. So I'm just going to send in that photo and hope it returns something akin to that Google page for us. As we see here, it's starting to load out all of those different pieces that I had within the picture. It has some of the links that I use commonly, like ChatGPT and Perplexity, and it gives me all of the different HTML here. So if I just go over to JSX, we can see all of those Tailwind classes and whatnot to create the page. Really nice. It gives you the ability to see what it looks like on mobile. So if I want more margin on mobile or the input area, we can submit that. And then as it starts to come in, this is going to be, from what I understand, rendering an iframe, and that's going to be how this is actually created. So we're going to be able to see as it starts to generate all of that HTML out that it's streaming back, that it's going to be hopefully adding that margin for us. If we go back down to the mobile view, there we go. We have that margin. Now that input isn't touching the corners. Now, one thing to note with this example that I'm showing you right now is this is using the GPT-4 model, which is going to be considerably slower than the GPT-3.5 Turbo model. If you are using the vision capability, just know that the inference is going to be a bit slower. That's why you see in this example, it took a little bit of time. But if I just go back and I toggle this back to GPT-3.5 and I update it, and let's just start an example from scratch. If I say, generate me a... SAS landing page, and I submit that. We can see it's generating that for our SAS company. It's going ahead and building out some examples for us. And again, it's we can see that there's some things that just don't look right. We can go ahead and further edit that navigation, right? We could specify on a mobile, we want this whole area to give this hamburger menu on mobile. We submit that. And then as soon as that starts to stream out, hopefully we'll get our hamburger menu. And I don't see it coming back in this example. Let's try one more time and let's say, give these more space on mobile. Obviously this is something that's a work in progress. You can't expect something like this to be perfect. It's a, an open source project from what I understand is one person that built this. 
just think about that, how impressive this is as a solo developer to be able to build something like this that is freely available to all of us. There's a couple different examples here that you can trigger if we run some of these preset examples here. See, okay, now we have an accordion section that's being built out here. You can see the mobile view, you can see the tablet view and the desktop view. I can tell that this is a web developer that created this because this is something as web developers that we often do is we go back and forth across these different sizes and make sure that it works across all of the different devices. For something like this, you can go ahead and toggle that on or off if you like. Now, the other nice thing is you can actually share these as well. So if you want to share this to this instance of the demo here, you can go ahead, show someone an example of what you're working on. You can also download the code here. So it will give you all of that HTML for whatever you created, and then you can also copy it. So it's very straightforward to use, right? You can just click around here, play around with it, and it just more or less works. So if you want to try out GPT-4, you can go ahead and toggle that on. And then the other nice thing is you have the option of both JSX or HTML. It's nice that you can just come in here if you're building a project within Next.js or React or whatever, you can go ahead, grab that here, or alternatively do HTML. If you also want to convert these to different languages, there's even that ability here, right? So you can go ahead and do that if you'd like, and then it will swap these out. So if I just demonstrate that here and you want to generate a Svelte component, it's going to make another API request to generate and convert what that had already made. Another nice feature, there's definitely a lot to learn from this project if you're interested in building something like this out. And it's just really well built. I want to commend Chris on what he's built here. It's a really impressive example on a different thing that we can build with these LLMs. So we obviously see a lot of chatbots and stuff like this, but being able to have a tool like this that you can go ahead and just fork and create your own version of it or whatever you want to do, it's really great. It's a good open source resource. I'd encourage you to check this out, maybe play around with it, see if there's other features that you can play around with. I'd be curious if you go ahead and set this up with other models, like maybe Grok, or if you set it up with something like Claude to see the different results like this. But it's a really interesting idea here, right? Because you can definitely imagine other applications that could benefit from something like this. Maybe something like a website builder, or if there's something along those lines where you're actually able to maybe not just export these components that you're copy and pasting, but maybe something that will actually build and refine things in a production system. Just a thought, maybe, maybe not. But I just wanted to overall give you a quick overview of this new project. It's a really great project. Go check it out. That's it for this one. I commend Chris for his amazing work on this. It's definitely a tool that I'm going to be playing around with. I'm going to take a look at how he set this up. It's just a really fun, great, and impressive tool. Kudos to Chris and his work. Go ahead, star the repo. Uh, follow him on GitHub. Follow him on Twitter. Follow him on all the channels. Otherwise, that's it for this video. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And otherwise, until the next one.